my name is Jonathan Hicks. We're doing Pythagoras' theorem. Who was Pythagoras? Well, he was a Greek bloke who lived a couple of thousand years ago and spent a lot of time thinking about triangles. In particular, he spent a lot of time thinking about right angle triangles. So if I draw one for you here, so there's our right angle. So this has to have a 90 degree angle in, or it's not a right angle triangle. And Pythagoras' theorem only works for right angle triangles. It's the first thing you need to be aware of. You might be wondering why it's called a theorem and not just a theory. What's the difference between a theorem and a theory? Well, a theorem has a proof. So a theory is like a good idea. You can test it. You might find it's true. It might not be true. But a theorem has a proof. Somebody's worked out something that proves it's always true. And in maths, we like things that are always true. And this is one of those things that is always true. Very useful. So if you were to draw a square on each side of the triangle here, so if we stick one there, one here, then this is the tricky one, there. Okay, so I've drawn a square on each side of the triangle. What Pythagoras discovered was, if you add together the areas of the two smaller squares, you always get the area of the bigger square. Yeah. And actually, this does turn out to be very useful. I know it might seem a bit abstract and, well, what's that good for? There's a lot of times, particularly when you're building things, so engineers would use this all the time, when you've got two lines that are at right angles to each other, for example, the floor and the wall of your building will always be at right angles, and you want to build something that's at a slope. Pythagoras' theorem allows you to work out the length of the slope. Or sometimes if you know the length of the slope, you can work backwards to find the length of one of the vertical or horizontal sides on the triangle. How can you do that? Let me explain. Imagine we knew that the vertical side of the triangle here was, had a length of three, let's say. I won't worry too much about the units here. Imagine the width of this triangle was four, and we wanted to find out how long that slope would be. You know, you might have, you might be building a house, for example, and you might want to stick a roof on the house, well, if you know how high you want your roof to be, then you can work out how long the slanty bit of the roof should be. So you can work out how many slates to put on the roof or whatever it is you're doing. So in any kind of engineering, this does turn out to be very useful. And people do use it every day. So the area of this square then, well, if that has a length of three and it's a square, then it's going to be three times three. So the area of this square here is going to be nine. This square, if the side of it is 4, it's going to have an area of 16. And Pythagoras' theorem tells us that if you add together the areas of the two smaller squares, you get the area of the big square. So without knowing anything about this square or the length of this side, we can just add together 9 and 16 and discover that the area of this square is 25. So now, knowing that the area of the square is 25, if we want to find out the length of the diagonal there, we just need to find a number which, when you square it, or times it by itself, gives you 25. And in this case, after a little bit of thought, we discover that it's 5. So not knowing the length of that side, we've figured it out. Just knowing the length of these two sides here. Now, when we write this in maths, you'll usually see Pythagoras' theorem looking a bit different from that. So if I draw another right angle triangle here, Incidentally, this side here, the side that's opposite the right angle, is always the longest side on a right angle triangle. Uh, sometimes we call it the hypotenuse. It's a Greek word, obviously, because Pythagoras came up with it. Um, but it's always the longest side opposite the right angle. That's one thing that's worth remembering. So if the length of this side had a length of a, so a is just some number, we don't know what it is yet, the width of the triangle is b, and the length of the hypotenuse, the longest side is c, then you'll sometimes see Pythagoras' theorem written as a squared plus b squared equals c squared. That's quite important. But what it's really saying is, if you take the length on this side and imagine a square here, then a squared is the area of that square. b squared is going to be the area of the square that's on this side of the triangle. So you take the area of the square on one side, plus the area of the square on the other side, and add them together. 
and what you get is c squared, which will be the area of the square on the long side of the triangle. It's very important that c, the thing that's by itself, is on the longest side of the triangle, and the other two bits go on the shorter sides. So you add together the areas of the squares on the shorter sides, and you always get the area of the square on the longest side. So that's what Pythagoras' theorem is. Now I'll show you a quick problem here. Aside from that rather trivial example with the 3, 4, 5 triangle, I'll show you the kind of problem they tend to ask in practice. But the Pythagoras problems can get a bit more involved. So I've done another video called Pythagoras Problems where I go through how you solve a few different problems using Pythagoras. But here I'm just going to do a very basic example so you get the hang of it. So here's our right angle triangle again. There's the right angle. Let's imagine the length of this side is 4 and the length of this side is 5 and we want to find out the length of the longest side, the side opposite the right angle. So again, if you imagine your square here, the area of that square is going to be 4 squared. The area of the square on this side is going to be 5 squared and we want to add those two things together. So 4 squared is going to give you 16, 5 squared it's going to give you 25, and if we add these two things together, well, 10 plus the 20 gives you 30, 6 and 5 is 11, so you're going to get 41. So that means the area of the square that will be on the longest side is 41, and we need to use this to work out the length of that side. The objective with Pythagoras' questions is always to work out the length of a side. So if we call that x, for example, the length of that side, We'll be trying to figure out what that length was using the fact that the area of the square here is 41. Now, if you try and think to yourself, hmm, what number do I need to square in order to get 41? You might be here for a while because there's no whole number that you can square and end up with 41. So in order to do this, you need to use your calculator, which I've left over here, and you need to use the square root button on your calculator. Now the square root button will look like a kind of ticky thing and the way you use it is you press your square root button first. So there's mine, you press your square root, you then type the 41 which will appear inside the square root and then press equals and in my case I get about 6.4. It's a long decimal number, I'm going to round it here. So this is one decimal place, but that means the length of this side, the x in this case, would need to be 6.4 because the square root of 41 is 6.4. Go and watch the square roots and cube roots video if you want to know more about square roots, but essentially the square root is the opposite of squaring. So if I now take the 6.4 and I square it on my calculator like that, it tells me the answer is 41 because the area of the square here would be 41. So that's very quickly how you do the problem. You find the area on one side, find the area on the other side, add them together, and then square root that to get from the area of the square back to the length. So that's how you use Pythagoras in practice. As I say, I've done another video, Pythagoras problems, where I'm doing more in-depth problems where you're using this. Sometimes you might have to find the shorter sides. Sometimes they use other kinds of triangles, and you have to try and draw in your own right-angled triangle. So this can get more complicated. So watch that if you want more information.